Hope y'all ready. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, live on Instagram, behind the scenes. Hi, Instagram, great to see you. Live on Clubhouse, mic check, mic check, mic check. Looks like mic's good, sounds good. All right, beautiful, okay. Yep, we're okay there. All right, now let's go live on Facebook. And make sure we're ready. Okay, good, let's go. Wow, that's all I can say, wow. It's been an incredible morning in so many ways. I've had the most interesting technological challenges of my life today. And so with that said, uh, today's going to be an incredible episode. That's all I know. That's how I look at it. That's how we should all look at it, right? Have you ever had those experiences? I want you to think about it for just a second. When everything seems to get in the way, isn't the victory that much better? When you come from behind and win the game, isn't it such so much more of a celebration? It's exhilarating, right? When you come from behind and you win, when you thought you were going to lose, but you conquer and come through, you know those moments in your life, right? You know those moments. So that's how I know today it's going to be a powerful episode of Hashtag Rise and Grind. I'm super excited to share my morning with you. Let's Go! Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? You see, there's no excuse for you not pushing yourself to the next level. In order for you to create a new you, you must have a new mindset. When teams come together, we can create things that are greater than the sum of all of their parts. Good morning and welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to eight, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? Dude, today is Thursday. That's right, today is Thursday, July 8th, 2021. And what's crazy is today is the very first and the very last time it'll ever be Thursday, July 8th, 2021. So I want to make sure we make the absolute most. And yes, I do mean the absolute most of this absolutely incredible, incredible day. Listen, this morning as I walked out to the truck, it was 73 degrees here in Lexington, Kentucky. It's beautiful. Nice little breeze. I mean, the weather's just been perfect these last few days. Maybe a little bit on the warm side for some people at some moments. But I'm a tropical people. I don't like the cold. And so it's been nice. And the kids have been spending a whole lot of time outside, right? My kids have been spending a whole lot of time outside. Summertime is in full effect. So what about yours? Have, your, have you or your kids been spending any time outside because of this incredible weather lately? I'd like to know. Just drop it in the comments or be like, nope, my kids are just locked up. They're not going anywhere. They're sitting in the corner playing video games. Or yes, my kids are getting out. I'm getting out, so on and so forth, right? Would love to talk about that. So my kids yesterday... Man, my kids yesterday. All right, sorry about that. My uh, yesterday, my kids were outside 
most of the day, right? I was here in the office, but uh, I could hear them in the background with my wife and so on and so forth. And so they were, they spent most of the day outside. They were riding their quads. They were uh, kayaking out on the pond that we have. We have some kayaks, right? They were uh, eating ice cream yesterday outside, which was great, right? <laughs> eating ice cream uh, the other night they had like s'mores they did a little campfire thing and they had some s'mores like and, and they've been doing all of that and then last night they there was a bunch of them over and they started playing basketball in the driveway right they were playing basketball in the driveway it was fun to watch them all you know grab the ball take a couple shots go all old school block one of the kids you know so you feel good about yourself yeah right you ever do that <laughs> i'm sure you all have right and so it was fun to watch them play basketball in the driveway and i it took me back like all of a sudden i remembered my childhood as I was watching them do all these things, as I was watching them be completely free, right? It took me back. It reminded me of when I was a kid, when I was hanging out at the courtyard of Greenlaw Garden Apartments in Flagstaff, Arizona with all the other kids. When I would rollerblade through the summer and I would literally rollerblade, like I would rollerblade from my house all the way down to the mall, which was a couple miles from my house, like on the on the main Route 66 with cars everywhere. Like we would go rollerblade all over the city of Flagstaff, Arizona, man. And I just remember running from uh, the cops at night <laughs> with James. Uh, we didn't. We we were afraid we we're gonna get busted from for curfew, and so anytime it was late, we'd go running from the police and doing silly things like that. And of course, I remember playing basketball all the time. Like every day, like as many hours as humanly possible, we were outside on that court playing basketball. And I remember what that felt like. I remember the love of that. I remember my fascination with the game. And I remember back in 1991. The summer of 1991, playing basketball with the kids, doing all the things that I used to do. I was 12 years old at the time, I guess. And I remember that in the summer of 1991, this guy named Will Smith, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of him. This guy named Will Smith came out with this song. And this song really captured everything. The song really captured everything. That is summer, right? Y'all recognize that song? My guess is you probably recognize that song, right? Song called Summertime by Will Smith. And that song just really captured the essence of what it meant to be free during the summer, right? To be 100% completely free. And that song rocked me. And from that day, I became an incredible fan of this guy, Will Smith. I was fascinated by his television show. I was fascinated by all of his songs. I remember the first time he said a cuss word in a song. I was shocked. <laughs> There's an old song many of you might not remember. But the song is called You Saw My Blinker. Bad word. <laughs> and me and my brother were just like, whoa, mind blown, right? But I fell in love with Will Smith over that song, Summertime, because it represented a freedom that I didn't necessarily have in my life. And from that day, I've always been a big fan of Will. All of his stuff has always fascinated me. I've always dreamed of meeting Will Smith someday. And as I've grown... I've had this desire to interview him, to bring him on to hashtag rise and grind breakfast with champions and to have an opportunity for all of us to get to know him a little bit better. I don't know how you would feel about that, but I think it'd be pretty fascinating. So I've always had that dream and I let, I let people know 
of that dream. Every chance that I get when I'm doing an interview or being interviewed, people ask, uh, who who's your dream guest? Who would you like to interview? And I'm always like, Will Smith, Will Smith, Will Smith, Will Smith, Will Smith. We had like a mock people cover made up where it says Will Smith to be on hashtag Rise and Grind and all of these things, right? And I've just always been focused and I, I, I send him messages every couple of weeks on Instagram. I know it's his team doing his Instagram, but whatever. I send messages. I'm just like, hey, Will, what up? It's Glenn. Just want to say, man, appreciated your video the other day. That was awesome. Keep up the good work. Love what you're doing, right? <laughs> I just send him messages like him and I are just good old buddies. Like we've just been friends forever, right? And so last week I was on a podcast with a guy and he said, man, who's your dream guest? Who would you love to interview? I, of course, said Will Smith and he was like, oh, okay, Will Smith, you know, no big deal. That's not, uh, you know, it's not as hard as you might think, so on and so forth. I'm like, okay. So then Friday, I'm sharing this story with you for a reason. Friday, we had some people in town for the 4th of July weekend. Paul Daly and his family were here in my office and I was showing them that magazine cover. I was showing them the mock-up people magazine cover that we had made that says Will Smith is going to be a guest on Hashtag Rise and Grind. And as I was showing Paul the magazine cover and telling him that this is my dream, this is my fascination, I got a text message from my phone. And the text message read, and I quote, I am on the phone with Will Smith's people. Can you jump on a call right now? <laughs> yes, I had guests. Yes, I was in the middle of something. And the answer was yes. Yes, I could take a call right now. And so I jumped on the call and it was Will Smith's people. And they asked questions about hashtag rise and grind. They asked questions about what we've done and why we do, how many episodes we've done, why it's important for us to have Will Smith on, how he's a fit, how he's a match, all of those things. And then they asked me to put together a one sheet that puts all of that stuff together so that they could hand it directly to Will Smith himself and see if Will Smith would be a guest on our show. So we have submitted the one sheet over to his people. And now we sit with our fingers crossed and we sit focused universally. And I would love for you to join me on that as we manifest Will Smith being a part of hashtag rise and grind. That would be amazing. What's really amazing though, here's what's really amazing. In my life, I have met Les Brown, whose videos I watched ridiculously and religiously for a season of my life. I have met Eric Thomas, the number one motivational speaker in the world and become friends with him who was a person that I admired, who videos I watched over and over and over again. I have had the opportunity to meet John Maxwell, who was incredibly impactful in my life through his videos and shake his hand. I've been able to meet Mr. Simon Sinek, who Simon Sinek rocked me with his book, Infinite Game, and some of the videos that came with it. I even got to meet Lindsey Sterling. Do you guys remember Lindsey Sterling? Lindsey Sterling's the uh, hip hop violinist. I even got to meet Lindsey Sterling back when I was listening to her music a lot. I used to love listening to her uh, music and then I ran into her in Louisville, Kentucky. Wherever my attention goes, the universe has found a way. It's really fascinating. Now, sometimes that's right away, right? I'm sure that I want you to think about the last time you had one of those I was just thinking about you moments. Have you ever had that? Because that's what that was. I was showing the magazine cover with Will Smith to another friend of mine when the Will Smith text came through, right? It was the I was just thinking about you moment. You, you've had those, I'm guessing, where you think about a friend and then all of a sudden they call, right? You're like, wow, that was amazing. I was literally just thinking about you. You had just popped into my head or I was just talking about you. Your ears must be burning, right? You've heard people say that before. Your ears must have been burning. Right, pretty cool. 
And so it's not just me that where my attention goes, the universe finds a way, but it works for you too. And sometimes it happens right away, just like that. Oh, I was just thinking about you and the phone rings. Other times it's 30 years or more in the making, as is the case with the Will Smith. It's been 30 years since Summertime came out in 1991. And for 30 years, I've always thought, man, it'd be really cool to meet that guy and get to know him. But here's the thing. If you focus on it long enough, it will come true. I've realized that in my life. Whatever you focus on long enough will come true. So what are you focused on? You know, there's this guy named Mike Vogel. He's a hashtag Rise and Grind member. Great guy on top of that. And Mike submitted a quote to the hashtag Rise and Grind planner. I read it this morning. As I open up my planner, right there at the top, there's a quote. It's always submitted by one of the Rise and Grind members. And today's quote says this. If your goals don't scare you, they're too small. And that really resonated and hit me this morning. I always try to dream big, but I could be bigger. My dreams and my goals don't scare me, as a matter of fact. I see them as achievable. And that's something I need to push the envelope on. If your goals don't scare you, they're too small. So what is it that you're focused on? Here we are in the summer of 2021. There are literally no limits. There are no limits. We're connected around the globe in universal ways. Like there are no limits. You can achieve anything that you want. So here we are in the summer of 2021. What is it that you're focused on? Let's dive in, all right? We're going to dive in a little bit further. Before we do, though, you know what we got to do on this show. All right, you know what we got to do. You know we got to do some dancing. We got to get the body moving. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. All right, so we need to get this object in motion. And while you guys are dancing real quick, I got to do something. So I'm going to put up this quote with Will Smith. Crazy. <laughs> All right, this is the part of the show where I need you to hit that share button. That's right, I need you to hit that share button because I believe if we can change the way people start their day, it'll make a massive impact on this planet. I truly believe that. And sometimes all it takes to change the way somebody starts their day is for you to hit that share button. This is also the part of the show where I want to say good morning to you and I want you to say good morning to me. Whether you're watching live or you're watching on replay, say what's up and I'll say what's up back. <laughs> How you doing, April Johnson? What's up, Robin Haynes? How are you? What's up, Mr. Mark Ellis? Great to see you as well. I also see Lydia Best is up in here. What's up, Mike Stevens? Beth Lucchese is in the house. Gail Beecraft, great to see you. What's up, Rodney Rock Hatfield? We've got Beverly Richardson is in the house. Angela Heath, Jeremy Noling, Rick Shavesty. How you doing, sir? What's up, Emily Galler? Great to see you. We've got Kim Fair in the house and Janelle Griego. Over on Clubhouse, I see my man Alpha. I see Justin. I see Jeff the Entrepreneur. I see Tara and Tamra. I see my boy Dustin is in the house. What's up, Vernita? How are you today? Great to see you. I also see Tony Mo and Thomas and Dan and Renee, El Michelle and Solana and Alan and my boy Darian Sanders. I also see Mallory and the doctor. What's up, Kim Phillips? Great to see you this morning. Hey, you doing, Ashley? My man. I see Mark is in the house. My boy Scott Flansberg, the human calculator, is up in here. What's up, Dr. Amy Rucker and Sheila and Debbie and Big Mike and Janice and Sophia and Stephanie and Ryan? All my folks in the house this morning. I'm absolutely loving it. Packed house over on Clubhouse. Hey, check it out. I need your. I need a favor. 
I need a favor. So yesterday, we uploaded the first Breakfast with Champions podcast. That's right. The Breakfast with Champions podcast has been released. Now, this morning, I was looking for a little bit. I was, I, I hadn't, it, I didn't see it over on, um, I didn't see it over on CastBox, which is one of the things that I use for my uh, downloading of, 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 um, of um, podcasts. I didn't see it over on mine, on CastBox, so it might not be showing up there yet. It should be on Apple iTunes. It should be on Spotify, anywhere that you download podcasts, but you're going to love the Breakfast with Champions podcast. I promise you, you're going to love it. So I would love it and would appreciate it if you would go find it wherever podcasts are downloaded. Download the first episode or two. Give us a review. All of those things, right? Because together, if you download the podcast and you subscribe to it and you write reviews, then they'll blow it up. They'll be like, oh, this Breakfast Champions thing is a thing. And then they'll make it even bigger. And then when it's even bigger, it'll be even easier for a guy like Will. Smith to say, yeah, I'll do that. I can impact a lot of people with that. Wow. They've got a large audience. They've got a lot of reviews. They get a lot of downloads. You know what I'm saying? So do me a favor. If you would today, you can help participate in the attraction of Will Smith into my world. And you can also experience the Breakfast with Champions podcast. That is amazing. Allows you to pause so you don't miss any segments, right? <laughs> if you've ever, you don't have to like totally blow your kids off anymore to listen to Breakfast with Champions, right? You'll be able to check it out um, over there. And there's obviously all kinds of celebrity interviews, motivation, education, inspiration, all that cool stuff. So do me a huge favor. Go to your podcast site, wherever you download. Download the Breakfast with Champions podcast. I would greatly appreciate it. All right? All right. Let's finish this up and dive in. So summertime, right? It's a season. No school. The kids are kind of like running loose a little bit, right? The schedule's a little bit loose. You got great weather out. Like to me, summertime represents freedom, right? Like my kids are free. Now, and, and my, my assumption is your kids are probably pretty free as well. You and I, however, we're not though, right? You and I most likely are not as free as the kiddos. Let's just say that, right? Like we've got an appointment we have to show up to. We have jobs we have to go to. We have money we have to make. We have obligations that we have to keep. We can't just run willy-nilly, freaky-freaky, whatever we want to do, right? Like the kids last night, they're like, Dad, can we do this sleepover? We're going to do all these things. I'm like, I got to get up at 3.20 in the morning. Y'all are at summer. Dad still got to get up at 3.20 a.m., right? They've got a lot more freedom than we do. You and, you and I most likely are not. But one place, though we're physically not free, one place that we are free is in our dreams, right? In our dreams, we can fly. In our dreams, we have superhuman strength. In our dreams, we... Lord, we're smooth talkers with the ladies, right, men? You guys know what I'm talking about. In our dreams, we're like ultra great looking. In our dreams, we're smart and we're witty and we're wealthy and we're funny. Like in our dreams, everything is possible. And then we as humans, we wake up and we take this dream that we just had and we put it on the shelf and we check it up as, and I've heard this said a million times, well, it was only a dream. My question I have for you this morning is, what if the dream was the reality and your reality was the dream? What if your truth was the lie and what you believe to be the lies were the truth? 
What if you were actually limitless and not limited? You know, I was sitting in a room with Alpha on Clubhouse. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm in the middle of an allergy attack. I was sitting in a room with Alpha on Clubhouse, and he said something really profound one day. He was talking about outer space. And, and he said, when you're in outer space, like we're here on Earth, we have like the ground and the sky, right? We see it as like the ground and the sky. But when you're in outer space, like what's up, what's down? What's the ground and what's the sky? Like when you're in outer space, it's black, free. You're free to move in whatever direction. There is no up, there is no down, there is no left, there is no right. These are all constructs of the mind. These are constructs that we've created. So what if you actually realized that you were limitless and not limited? What if all the constructs of your mind are telling you that you're less than what you are, that you're less than capable of what you're truly capable of? What if? What would you do if you were truly free? You see, I'm going to run through these super fast because I don't want to go too far over on time, but this is super important. And all morning, I've had technological difficulties. I've had allergy attacks. I've had everything to try to get in the way of this message. And this is why I know it's so important. So I hope you'll stick with me today, even if we run a little bit over. Because I really believe that this is for you. There are seven areas that ultimately you need to free your mind. I'm going to say that one more time. There are seven areas in your life where ultimately you need to free your mind. Now, these are obviously the seven pillars, right? Seven pillars of our lives. And I talk about them often in my Rise and Grind Elites and sometimes here on hashtag Rise and Grind. But I've never talked to you about them in this way. I've never talked to you about them in a way where I want to challenge your, cor your current parameters in those areas. I've never talked to you in a way like, hey, my name is Glenn and I'm your friend. And some of the things that I say, may you may or may not agree with, but that's okay. That's okay, 100%. I don't need you to agree with me. I need you to know and understand the possibilities. That's all. You see, I'm not a person who believes someone has to be wrong in order for someone else to be right. I believe we can all be right. That our truth and our experience ultimately determines our belief systems. And so I don't need you to agree with me this morning. I simply want to open your eyes to the possibilities. So there are seven areas of your life where you need to free your mind what's up marcus black great to see you sir there are seven areas of your life where you need to free your mind the first one and probably the most important is faith i need you to understand that there is no rule book when it comes to faith now there are rule books when it comes to religion and a lot of times people get those two things confused you see, Christianity has a rule book. Buddhism has a rule book. Catholicism has a rule book. All the religions have a rule book. Faith is all about your experience. There is no rule book when it comes to faith. You see, I found my path to spiritual enlightenment. I connected to the God that I believe in, the God of my universe. I connected on a path that took me through Scientology initially, through many other religions, and ultimately my experience with Jesus, my experience with the Bible, is what ultimately unlocked the faith that I'm able to breathe today. Now, here's what I will never do. I will never put my God, the God of the universe, in a box. And I will never say that there is only one path to faith 
and spiritual enlightenment. I will never, ever, ever say that. I don't believe that. I believe that my God is free to love on you however he chooses to love on you. I believe that my God is free to choose whatever path he has in his mind for you to get you where you need to go. I do not believe he is confound or stuck to a rule book. And so I want you to, again, you don't have to agree with me. I'm not interested in that. I just want you to expand your mind and your thinking a little bit of how you see and understand faith. As you expand and you free your mind in the world of faith, it allows you to understand and have empathy for others. And the more understanding and empathy we have for others, the more we have the ability to love others. And as we love others, it makes your life and the world a better place. The second area that I'm going to challenge you to free your mind The second area that I'm going to challenge you to free your mind is around this idea of fitness. You see, fitness is obviously important. Our health is important. Our bodies are important. Our ability to live long and to live happily and to be able to continue to serve others is incredibly important. So fitness is definitely a pillar when it comes to our lives. Now, with that said, I want you to, to, to start to believe or, or start to think about this very simple truth. You are capable of so much more when it comes to fitness. You can run faster than you believe you can. You can lift more heavier weights than you think you can. You can find more time if it was a priority. There are so many things that you can do in the fitness world. David Goggins says it this way. He says, when you feel like, when your body goes into protection mode and your body says, okay, we have to stop. We can't go further. We don't have another ounce. When your body reaches that point, you're only 40% of what you're capable of. This is why women can lift cars off of children that are in danger, right? You are capable of so much more physically than you're giving yourself credit for. Now, fitness is another area where everyone tries to put it in a box. There's only one way. You have to be low carb. You have to be a runner. You have to be um, a keto person. You have to do the spoon. You have to do the whatever, right? Everybody always, you always wants to put it in a box. Like there's only one way there, that works, and it's simply not the truth. You're free to explore your body. It's yours. This is your life. You are free. You do not have to get boxed in. But ultimately, what you focus on becomes your reality. So if you are focused on weakness, if you are focused on poor health, if you are focused on things that are negatively affecting you, things that don't serve you, you will attract more of those. You will draw more of those. You will ultimately not be free. In my opinion, <laughs> gotta throw that in there you don't have to agree with me i don't care whether you do or not the third area of your life that i challenge you to set yourself free is when it comes to your finances your current belief system about money may be tainted your current belief system about money may have come from your parents or those before you. Your current belief system about money may have come from your environment. And I'm just here to tell you right now, dude, money is not real. It's not even real. It's so crazy. It's completely made up. Like pricing is all made up. Value is all made up. It's all perception. It's all in the mind. That's why some people pay $1,000 for a pair of shoes. Other people won't pay but $2 for a pair of shoes, right? Because it's all up here. It's all made up. Up and you're welcome to take as much of it as you want. You can have as much of it as you want. You can you can get more, you can earn more, you can make more, you can do all of those things. You can literally do all of those things. Like I used to believe that fifty thousand dollars a year was a ridiculous amount of money. Then I used to believe that a hundred thousand dollars a year was a ridiculous amount of money. And then I started to believe that $500,000 a year was like just enough money. <laughs> and then I started to realize that there's ways to make $100,000 a month 
And there are people that make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month like it's nothing. And then there's people on top of that that are making millions a month. And then there's people on top of the mat that make tens of millions a month. And they got the same two hands, the same two legs, the same 24 hours that you and I do. The only difference is they've freed their mind. They have freed their mind on what they believe is capable for them. What real true freedom looks like to them. They've unlocked it. And as I continue to level up, I continue to hit some unlocks too because I'm not stuck on what somebody else told me. I'm not stuck on who I was. I understand that I'm free to take as much of it as I want. No guilt, no shame. I'll do good things with it. I'll make the world a better place. Bring it all to me. Come on. Get me a go grab me another go grab me another bucket, honey. Go grab me another bucket. I need you to free your mind in these areas, man. I'm telling you, you've been cultivated. You've been shaped. You've been told what you believe to be truth might be a lie. The lies might be the truth. Up might be down. Down might be up. You have to set yourself free. I'm only on number three. I'm 36 minutes into this show. I'm supposed to give you seven of these. I think we're going to have to hold on to the other four till tomorrow. What do you think? You think we hold on to the other four till tomorrow? You guys want one more? What do you think? <laughs> Are y'all feeling this this morning or not? <laughs> That's what I need to know because I'm like just in it. I'm in it. I'm in the moment. All right. I'm going to give you one more at least. Maybe two. The fourth area of your life that I want to set you free or at least start have you, having you to start thinking about them differently. All right. The fourth one is your friends. This area of our lives is probably the most underestimated. Your circle of friends is crucial to your ability to dream. I want you to truly understand this. The people that you surround yourself with is crucial to your ability to dream. You have to be so stinking picky about who you allow in your circle and your environment. And sometimes that can be really difficult. I've had to let go of, of many of my friends, people that I love. I had to let them go because they were not serving themselves and ultimately not serving me. And it's not because they're not a bad person. It's because I am too weak. I am too easily influenced. That's the reality of the situation. It's not, oh, I got to get rid of my dude because he's choosing to drink all the time. Or I got to get rid of my dude because he's choosing to drug all the time. Or I got to get rid of my dude because he's choosing to be negative all the time. No, uh -uh, uh -uh. that's the misconception. That's the lie. The reality is I'm too easily influenced. If I get around somebody who drinks a lot, I'm probably going to drink more. I get some around somebody who drugs a lot, I'm probably going to drug more. I get around somebody who's negative all the time, I'm probably going to buy into that negativity. You feel me? It's a reflection of self. You see, we all internally are influenced by the people that we love, that we connect emotions with. Those are the ones that influence us. So your circle of friends is one of the most crucial decisions you can make. Scott Simons was talking about it earlier on Breakfast with Champions. He was talking about how he likes to be in circles like Arate and all these different things that he's in, those circles, right? Your network is your net worth is how you've heard it. But most of us glance over it. We say, okay, that's cool, but homeboy's been my dude since I was five. Or, yeah, that's cool, but I've known old girl since middle school. Or, yeah, that's cool, they do this, 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 and that, but that's okay because they're kind of funny. Look, man, I'm telling you, if you want to be free to dream, at the highest levels that you could possibly dream. If you want to be free in your mind, then the people you surround yourself with is a crucial decision. I was on the phone with a friend of mine from Breakfast with Champions from Clubhouse. I was in St. Pete, Florida, and I was on the phone and she was telling me, she was like, I was looking out at all the cars and there was all these Ferraris and all these nice cars, right? We were at a retreat down there and she was telling me, she's like, that's what your, that's what your driveway is going to look like in a couple of years. 
She was like, all those cars that you're seeing out there, this is just, this is just a, a, a preview to what it's going to look like for you in a few years when you're going to be looking out and your kids and you're going to have this big, beautiful house and it's going to be on the ocean. And there's going to be all these nice cars, right? Those are the types of friends you need to have in your life. The ones that are going to tell you you're dreaming too small, you need to dream bigger. The ones that are going to tell you that the world is filled with abundance and that you can have it all. The ones that are going to feed your spirit, feed your dream, feed your soul. Those are the people to get around. I need you to free your mind to be able to dream at the highest level. When you dream big, what you focus on becomes your reality. You see, you have this universal gift, this ability to create. That's why when you think about it, all of a sudden they call. Oh, I was just talking about you. You did that. That wasn't a coincidence. You did that. You see, friend, there's so many things that you haven't been told. There's so many things that you might not know. See, you are source. You are energy. There are far more methods of communication on this planet than you might think. There's a universal wave. There's a universal path. There's a universal frequency. And whatever you focus on, whatever you give attention to, the universe literally shifts, melts, and, 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 and uh, uh, um, it molds itself to make your dreams your reality. Just sometimes you don't realize it and you focus on the things that don't serve you. And I want to challenge you to change that today. Stop focusing on the limits and the limitations and realize that you truly are limitless. There are no limitations. There are no limitations. Reach as high as you want to reach. Go as far as you want to go. But make sure to set yourself free in the only place that you truly can be, which is in your mind. In your faith, in your fitness, in your finance, in your friends. Evaluate. Take another look. Are they serving you or are they not? I'm going to give you the other three tomorrow. I'm going to let you out of here. <laughs> I know today's episode has been a little bit interesting and a little bit different. And I appreciate you being patient and understanding with me. And I hope, I hope. I hope that it rang something in you because I remember, I remember what it was like when I first heard the song Summertime by Will Smith and I remember the way that that resonated in my soul and ultimately compelled me to become a, a, a person of influence and it compelled me to become a person large enough big enough and valuable enough to ultimately be in a room and have a conversation with an incredible guy like Will Smith. And that's my hope for you today is that we've just challenged you in some of your ways of thinking so that you can be inspired to become the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be. Because that's what I believe. I believe that you and I are children of God, the God of the universe, the God that made everything. And that God made you and I to be the best not to be average, not to be above average, not to be a little bit below, but the absolute best. And ultimately not for us, but ultimately when you, but for others. Because when you become the best version of yourself you can possibly be, it makes a massive impact on this planet. Listen, I'm going to get out of here. If you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. Fair enough. You can go to glennlundy.com. If uh, you haven't already, please go download the podcast, Breakfast with Champions. Subscribe. Give us a review. I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, but most importantly, come back here again tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. We'll do this all over again on hashtag Rise and Grind. See you later. Have a great day. Dance that has gotten to be a little bit out of control. It's cool.